Dear students, in this video we shall see the theme, structure and poetic devices used in the poem, The Ant and the Cricket, adapted from Aesop's Fables. The poet has explored the themes of hard work and wisdom. He has explained how the ant had stored the food wisely in the summer itself before the arrival of the winter, whereas the foolish cricket fails to do so. Before we see the structure of this poem, I would like you to check some lines 18 where there is a slight difference in the alignment in the textbook of grade 10 Tamil Nadu board. Lines 18 to 22 have this structure and also there is an additional line which is actually a repetition to be removed. The line in the penultimate stanza for all nature looked gay. It comes only once in the poem. Then the poem has seven stanza and the rhyme scheme is as follows. A A B B A A B B A B B C C A A B B A B B C C A A B B and in the last stanza it is A B B C C. Now let us see the poetic devices used in the poem. The whole poem can be called anthropomorphism which means to endow a non-human character with human traits and behavior. This is not to be confused with personification. Personification is the use of figurative language to give inanimate objects or natural phenomena human-like characteristics in a metaphorical and representative way. Anthropomorphism, on the other hand involves non-human things displaying literal human traits and being capable of human behavior. If you remember the poem, The Spider and the Fly, which you studied in grade 9, you can easily understand the figure of speech, anthropomorphism. Throughout the poem, The Ant and the Cricket, we see the ant and cricket conversing and behaving like human beings. The cricket finds the cupboard empty at his home and the ant sends the cricket out of the door, which shows as if he too was in a normal house. So in all the lines using pronouns, he, I, him, then my and the actions and the conversation between the ant and cricket, anthropomorphism is used. You can check these lines. So except a few lines, there is use of figure of speech anthropomorphism in many of the lines. So in the first stanza, first line, accustomed to sing, where the cricket has the habit of singing, so human characteristics. When he found that at home, his cupboard was empty and winter was come, all these lines use anthropomorphism. Not a flower, he could see, oh what will become, says cricket of me here, the cricket speaks. He set off to a miserly ant, to see, to keep him alive, he would grant him shelter from rain, all these lines use anthropomorphism. He wished only to borrow, he would pay tomorrow. Here also anthropomorphism is used. In this fifth stanza, all the lines actually denote the conversation between the ant and the cricket. So here anthropomorphism is used. My heart was so light that I sang day and night. You sang sir, you say. Here also human characteristics in all these three lines. In the last stanza, the first line denotes a conversation. Whereas the next two lines denote the action of the ant. Here also anthropomorphism is used. So almost all lines use anthropomorphism. Next we see the usage of metaphor. It is in the last line of the poem. Metaphor states that one thing is another thing. It equates two things not because they actually are the same but for the sake of comparison. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. In this line the poet refers to human beings. When he says, some have two. Here cricket is compared to human beings and hence the figure of speech is metaphor. Next we shall see contrast which means opposites. It is the opposition between two objects and it is used to emphasize the difference between two people, places or things. So in the line, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. Borrow and lend are the opposite words. So the figure of speech here is contrast. And in the line that I sang day and night, day and night are contrast or opposites. So the figure of speech is contrast. 
Next we shall see epithet. An epithet is a word or phrase which describes the main quality of someone or something. Epithets are usually adjectives that describe a noun. So in the first line, a silly young cricket. Here the cricket is described using the words silly and young. So epithet. Gay summer and spring. Here summer and spring are described using the word gay which means joy or happy. Snow covered ground. Here ground is described using the words snow covered hence epithet. Here ant is described using the word miserly hence epithet. Poor little cricket. Here cricket is described using the words poor and little hence epithet. Next we shall see anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a word or expression. At the beginning of successive phrases, clauses, sentences or verses. In the lines, not a flower could be see, not a leaf on a tree. Both the lines begin with the word not, hence anaphora. He wished only to borrow, he would repay it tomorrow. Both the lines begin with the word he, hence anaphora. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. But tell me dear cricket, did you lay anything by? Here also both the sentences begin with the word but, hence anaphora. Next we shall see repetition. Repetition is a word or phrase repeated more than one time to put emphasis. So in the line, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend, we ants never is repeated, hence repetition. Now let us quickly see the words of alliteration. Alliteration is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words and it begins with consonant sound words. So in the first line, silly sing are alliterated words. Sunny, summer, spring are the alliterated words in the second line. Cupboard and come are the alliterated words. With, wet, with are alliterated words. Starvation and sorrow are alliterated words. Says, servant are the alliterated words. When, weather, was, warm are alliterated words. Sang, sir, say are the alliterated words. He, hastily are the alliterated words. Folks, fable are the alliterated words. Now let us see enchantment. When a line runs on into the next line with no stop or pause, maintaining the sense, it's called as enchantment. So here in the first line itself you can see a silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warmth. There is no punctuation at the end of the first line, hence enchantment. In the second stanza also first line you can see there is no punctuation at the end. Not a crumb to be found on the snow covered ground. So no punctuation at the end of the first line. Hence enjabment. Here enjabment is from the third stanza's last line to the fourth stanza's first line. To see if to keep him alive he could grant him shelter. So here there is no punctuation at the end of the last line in the third stanza. Hence enjabment. In the next stanza. But tell me dear cricket did you lay anything by? There is no punctuation after by. And the line continues when the weather was warm. Hence enjambment. And in the next stanza, first two lines. My heart was so light, there is no punctuation at the end. That I sang day and night, hence enjambment. Cesura is a break in a line where the reader pauses usually through punctuation. This figure of speech is also used in almost all the lines of the poem. So first stanza, you can see all the four lines. There is a break in between. So in the first line after cricket, there is a comma. After warm there is a comma, after that there is a comma, after empty there is a comma. So all these four lines use cesura. So let me remind you, cesura is a break in line where the reader pauses usually through punctuation and it is in between the line. So here in the third stanza first line also you can see, oh what will become? Then there is a comma and also the closure of inverted quotes. And in the next line all dripping with wet comma to see if comma to keep him alive comma. So cesura. In this stanza, all the lines use cesura because there is a punctuation, either comma or a closure of a inverted quotes or a semicolon used in between the lines. In the next stanza, the last line, cesura is used. And in the last stanza, first two lines and also in the last two lines, cesura is used. So cesura is a punctuation that is used in between the lines. Now let us quickly see couplet. Couplet actually... The rhyming words decide the couplet. You can check back the rhyme scheme for reference if you want. So a couplet is two lines of poetry which come next to each other. Especially two lines that rhyme with each other and are the same length. So all the stanzas couplet has been used. 
only in the stanzas which have five sentences one line is left out otherwise all the two two lines pair and they form couplet so first stanza sing and spring rhyme so couplet home and come rhyme hence couplet found and ground rhyme hence couplet sea and tree rhyme hence couplet bold and cold rhyme hence couplet ant and grant rhyme hence couplet rain and grain rhyme hence couplet borrow tomorrow rhyme hence couplet friend lend rhyme hence couplet buy i rhyme hence couplet light night rhyme hence couplet ye se rhyme wicket cricket rhyme true to rhyme hence these sentences form couplet dear students i hope you all would have understood all the figure of speech used in this poem subscribe to my channel to get the new updates and also watch all my previous videos do click the like button if you like this video and share with your friends thank you happy learning